So in our last video for UCC, you saw our truck blow up in the dyno and we took the motor apart to see what was wrong with it. Now we've got all our parts back from our suppliers, from machine shop, we're ready to put this thing back together. But before we do that, we wanted to go through the parts and show you guys what goes into a motor of this caliber to make this kind of power. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the pistons we're using in this engine build. Uh, these pistons here are a forged aluminum, which is much stronger than your stock cast aluminum piston. Also you'll notice the combustion chamber is quite a bit different, much, much bigger here than here. This is an offset bowl, which you need with a stock injector, and we actually modify our 12 valve injectors to work on a centered bowl. So these are much stronger, you can use much different, much better rings, they have different ring lands. Uh, the reason this is not silver, it's anodized, it's hard anodizing on this piston, makes it a lot stronger. So this piston here is what we're going to use in our big build for the UCC. Now could I run these on the street, in my street engine, these anodized pistons? You wouldn't want to. Uh, on the cast pistons, they're able to cast in a piece of iron here to be the, the ring land for this top ring. The reason they do that is the high compression, or whatever it is in diesels, they just beat the crap out of ring lands. And so if you get about 25, 30,000 miles on a forged piston, it's done. You'll lose the ring land here. So this is a race only piston. What you got over there that's cool? Over here we've got the Hamilton Warhead that we're gonna put in this engine. This is made by Hamilton Cams. It's still 12 valve cylinder head. Flows two and a half times more than a stock head. If you pour them, you can get a little over 300 CFM out of them, which is close to triple what a stock 12 valve head. The, the main feature is it has a taller deck height, so uh, we can get more flow through the valves. It has uh, the uh, exhaust side is cast more solidly, so it's less prone to cracking. But the, the, big, the big point of the warhead is flow. Flow makes horsepower. Can you use any set of head studs to bolt that on a truck? No, because the deck height's a little taller. You need custom head studs that are longer. You need longer valves. You need longer push rods. It's quite expensive to put a warhead on your truck, so you got to be dedicated to making horsepower if you want a warhead. Yep. Next, let's talk about piston pins. This is what transmits the power from the piston to the rod, which goes to the crank. Uh, stock pins are actually pretty gnarly. Here's a stock pin for you. I want you to see this here. These are pretty heavy duty pins, but when, you're, when you have enough power, it'll actually start flexing this pin. It'll start bending. You'll start seeing a bunch of bearing transfer on this pin. So Trand has these really neat uh, diamond coated tool steel pins. It's a much stronger material than it's tool steel. Also you'll notice it's a much thicker wall. So it's a heavier, heavier duty wall there. This takes a lot of power. This, these, these things are awesome. I've ran these for a while and I've never had nothing the best experience with these things. And so this diamond coating makes it really, really tough and the material is just awesome. So this is what we're using in these uh, pistons to transmit the power down. Fun fact, the uh, trend at Diamond, he said that is the exact same pin that is used in a top fuel dragster when they sell pins for a top fuel dragster. So very interesting, the material and the wall thickness. That's basically a, a top fuel diesel, we'll call it. Top fuel diesel, there you go. <laughs> so over here, we have some um, upgraded roller rockers from Harlan Sharp. Last, this last engine, we, uh, we broke our roller rockers. Here's a stock rocker pedestal setup. They have solid tips. They uh, do not, uh, they don't roll over the top of the valve. They're, they're pretty good, up 1,000 horsepower. We haven't had yeah. trouble with them. Yeah. On our last engine, we actually split these factory pedestals. If we get in here, we can see the, the cracks in the bottom. And the problem we had was the whole pedestal was rocking back and forth, and the pins themselves, the, the trunnions, were flexing up and down. So we went to Harlan Sharp, and they have these new rocker pedestal bases that have these support arms that come out and grab the outside of the, of the uh, trunnions, and it's way more rigid. Then we uh, did a couple little upgrades on the bottom to uh, dowel them in more solid so they couldn't rotate around. We feel that this can be a lot more solid valve train setup for this engine. Hopefully we can get a more lift at the valves because there's less movement up here and more reliability. And obviously we don't want to split <laughs> pedestals again. Along with the rocker pedestals, we've got these big valves up here. Here you can see these bent valves from the cam failure and uh, valves can bend. Here's some, some new ones that are going this warhead. These are Inconel, they're not a stainless steel valve. Inconel is a lot uh, better to heat, stainless steel, usually about 1600 degrees and they start bending and tuliping. And we plan to go a lot over 1600 degrees in this engine and so you really need Inconel valves. 
A factory 12 valve Cummins actually has an in-canal exhaust valve. So even for a factory application, they don't think stainless is up to the task on the exhaust. So with both the intake and exhaust are that. They're also a lot bigger. You know, these are about a, a two inch diameter stock. You know, stock exhaust valve is under 1.7 inches. So that's how you get a lot of the flow out of this head. We've also upgraded the stems. They're fatter. A factory valve is about a 5 16 or 8 millimeter. We're up there 11 30 seconds. We want that strength and that, that heat transfer so that, you know, these are reliable at mega horsepower. So our next thing in the powertrain over here, we've got the pistons, we've got the, rod, we've got the pins. The pins go in these rods here. The rods we're using for this build are actually made by Wagler. I really like these rods. One of the things I like about them is actually the rod bolts. This is something a lot of people don't know about, but the rod bolts are very important because there's a lot of weight. You have the pin, you have the piston, and it's going up real fast. And when that crank turns, those rod bolts got to pull this thing back down. And these will stretch. And so the, these are actually oversized bolts. They're in half inch bolts. They're much stronger a fastener for these rods. And these rods are very powerful. These won't have any, any problem holding the power we're going to make. These are probably a 3,000 plus horsepower rod. So with these rods in the motor, we should be really, really good to go. I think they're, what, a half inch and regular ones like 716s? Stock is, yeah, the normal 716s and those are half inch bolts. So. Our old engine had, you know, a little bit smaller R&R &R rods with uh, mm -hmm. 716 and now we're upgrading to these, these better Wagler rods. Another cool feature Wagler put in these is you'll notice on this bottom piece right here there's some relief here. This is to allow the oil to escape the bearing easier so it doesn't get caught up in there. So this is kind of a nice little feature he put in there. Some oil relief uh, on these as well. Okay back over here let's talk a little bit about valve springs. These are the valve springs we were running before. They were barely adequate for our application. You know we don't want to run more spring pressure than we need. It's harder on the cam but we're going to spin this engine a little bit harder this time around, uh, give it more fuel. Yep. Now these springs are designed for like a roller, <laughs> a roller tappet, you know, maybe a high performance gasoline application. But um, we're hoping with our new tappets and uh, the new cam and our oil, we, we didn't really have trouble with a tappet wear before. We're hoping we can get away with this much higher seat pressure. Factory valve spring on a 12 valve, it's really low, less than 100 pounds of seat pressure. A lot of people upgraded to the 60 pound springs, they're about 150. On this engine, we're shooting for a little over 200 pounds on the seat and close to 600 pounds at full valve lift. That uh, is what you need to control the, all this heavy um, valve train, these bigger oversized valves, you know, controlling that, all of that stuff at 6,000 RPM. You need a good spring. You do. And another thing that helps the tappets live is this steel camshaft. This is a Hamilton steel camshaft. There's a few things on this you'll notice that are different than a stock camshaft here. First off is you'll notice the, whole, the journals are bigger. This is a stock journal size, this is aftermarket. This is a 62 millimeter cam bore. The reason you know it's bigger is now you can run a bigger, a bigger uh, lobe here because the lobe can't be any higher than the journal outer diameter because otherwise you couldn't fit it through the block because you've got to feed these through a tunnel that's the same diameter as these holes. So you can't go any bigger than the outer diameter of this, plus it's stronger. And so with this uh, cam, we hope to really, <laughs> hope it doesn't break this time, but it didn't break because of the cam, like I say, we have addressed the, the thrust plate issue. We're going to try some different springs. And we have a, a good hope that this is going to work. Another thing that you'll notice in this cam is how wide the lobes are compared to the stock um, cam. So that puts the force over a much greater area, so that should work out well. Now in a normal 12 valve engine, the largest tap that you can run is 1.45 inches. The reason being is if it's any bigger, it's going to interfere with this lobe here. This lobe is to power your fuel pump on the your 12 lift, valves. Your lift pump, right? Yeah, your lift pump. The lift pump to your injection pump. And if it's bigger than 145, it's going to interfere. It's going to hit this. So you can't go any bigger than 145. So uh, on this engine, we don't have that lobe. So we're using a little bit larger uh, tappet that can, you know, to maximize our area for this to work on. So we can get clear up to a 1.5 inch tappet and just gives you more area to work on. Now on these tappets here, while you're talking about them, we have two different types of tappets here. We have some DLC coated tappets. They're quite expensive. Those are the top dog. Top, top of the line, you know, they're custom made, heat treated, chromoly steel, and then they have a DLC coating that adds another four or 500. They're, they're quite expensive. They are. The other top dog tappet on the market are these nitrided tappets. Now these are a 1.45. They're designed to work with 
the guys running a factory lift pump. We're going to run these on our backup engine, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, these are, these are top of the notch, awesome, great tappets, and these are in the backup motor. So the backup motor is getting these nitrided um, lifters. Um, the top dog engine, we're going to get the DLC ones, and uh, we'll see. We didn't really have a lot of wear problems before with that good... I, we blame it on our power-driven oil, so... <laughs> but we are going heavier spring pressure, so we want to we want to hedge our bet here, make sure... Make sure everything holds up, so yeah. we are raising spring, but you're right. So so speaking of oil, what, what else are we working on here? I guess I guess uh, we talk about the, the oil pump, right? Yeah, oil pump. So normal race engines, you got to have a really fancy high dollar multi-stage dry sump system, and they're awesome. And they can get different oil pressures on different stages, and uh, they're just great. Unfortunately, we don't have the budget to put in one of these systems in our truck. So we're trying to figure out how we can increase the oil capacity, oil pressure, oil flow in our engine. And luckily, uh, Cummins makes engines that are a lot bigger than 5.9. I had Will look up and he made us this. Tell us about this, Will. So this oil pump, this is actually from an 8.3 Cummins and it's a little bit taller, the pump setup. And, and flow wise, um, it's about 26 gallons per minute that it flows where this upgraded regular 12 valves about 20 gallons per minute so that's a substantial increase you know a third or so more oil flow with this pump but the problem is it wouldn't quite fit the gear setup is too tall to fit on the crank um, this bore of this was too large to fit in the oil hole pocket on our six seven yep. block so we machined this down we dropped the gears down did a little custom machining and next thing you know, we've got an upgraded bolt-on oil pump, and we'll see what kind of oil pressure it makes. We're, we're hoping this will get us up in that 90 to 100 PSI range. We weren't quite that high in the old engine, and nope. see if we can get some more oil pressure. And that's too much pressure for your turbos. Your turbos don't want that much pressure. Start blowing out oil seals. So we're gonna reduce the pressure in the lines between the oil supply and the oil inlet of the turbo. We're gonna orifice it down and measure and get these things about 45 as high as you wanna go on those turbos. So these ball bearing gear yeah, sets so where they want. We don't have the cool multi-stage stuff, so we're just going to make it work with some old-fashioned trickery. Another thing that's cool in this motor that goes along with the camshaft and everything here is the actual push rods. This is what uh, rides on the camshaft on the tap. So this goes in here, this goes in here, and this pushes up those rockers. It rides on this, right? The yep. Cups on here. It goes right in there. Okay, so this thing has to push against those heavy springs. There's no point in getting an awesome camshaft and heavy duty springs if your push rod is just going to flex. Everything flexes, nothing's perfect, so everything's going to flex. Okay, and, it is, and when it wants to open up that valve and it flexes, you're losing duration of your camshaft. So we want to minimize flexing as much as we can. One way to do that is simply increase the size of the push rod itself. A normal stock push rod is 3 8 of an inch in diameter. This is a stock push rod. This is our 9 16 diameter push rod for our engine. This is a super strong push rod. This is actually probably stronger than what's allowed in top fuel. Top fuel is limited to half inch push rods. So it's actually bigger than what comes in a top fuel motor. That's awesome. So this is the push rod we're using to control our valve train. Keep everything happy in there. Yep. One last little mod you do have to do. Big push rods like this will not fit in the stock head. So even on this warhead, we had to machine the, the guide holes where the push rods come through. We had an oval shape them a little so there was more room for these push rods to come through yep. but after a couple little mods even a stock head if you got in there with a dremel tool you can run a big push rod and really there's no penalty to running push rods they're on the the, the low ratio side of the rocker so the weight isn't nearly affect you nearly as much as it does over on the valve spring side really there's no there's no downside to running a heavier push rod it's just free horsepower at that point yep and the last thing on this table is, is just fun to talk about. It's not really motor related, but this is one of our big turbos. This is a Garrett GTX 5533. This is the 98 millimeter version. And what's cooler than one GT55? Three. <laughs> so we're running three of these guys on the racetrack. Actually two 98 millimeter 55s and one 88 millimeter. And these things move a ton of air. We're having over 400 pounds of air a minute through our engine. So that is a load of air. Uh, on the engine dyno, that should be good for 4,000 horsepower. It's not going to make it on the chassis dyno through, through the transmission, but uh, yeah, but the air is huge on this setup, and so it's going to be a fun build. So now we have all these parts, it's time to put this together. So in our next video, we're going to do some time lapse stuff, try to get it so you can watch us put this thing together, and then we're hoping to have this thing on the dyno within a week.
Thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, uh, check out our other social media avenues, and we'll catch you next time. See you.